Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at and testing out one of the best pre-built gaming PCs that I've taken a look at on the channel in 2021. So I picked this up open box from my local Best Buy for $749. Now the specs on the box stated something a little different than what we have here, but at a $750 price point in 2021, in the market we're in right now, I still think I got a really good deal. Since this was an open box deal from Best Buy, I knew I was kind of taking a chance on something being swapped out or something missing. And I've actually had this happen in the past, but it turned out a lot worse than it did with this PC here. This is something that I would not mind keeping at a $750 price point. The first one I reviewed was available at Walmart for, I want to say, $550. It had a GTX 1650 Super and a 6-core Ryzen 3600. Now, on paper, this one here should have an RTX 3060 and a Ryzen 5 5600G. We got the correct CPU, but somebody has gone through and swapped out this GPU. What they've done here is taken out the 3060 and replaced it with a 1660. It's a non-super variant, but we still have 6 gigabytes of VRAM, and another thing that's been swapped out here is the SSD. It should have been a 512 gigabyte, so only got a 256 in it. But everything else is basically the same. We do have that Ryzen 5 5600G, 6 cores, 12 threads, with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. And the list price on a PC like this is around $1,250 with the correct specs. So you'd get that 3060, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, and that 5600G. But with this one here, it looks like somebody really wanted that RTX 3060, so they swapped it out with an Asus 1660. Going into this, I actually knew exactly what I was getting into. I was able to pull the side off of this unit and notice that it was a GTX instead of an RTX. So that's why the price was so low on it. But I'm not complaining at all because this thing actually performs really, really well. And in this video, we're going to run some benchmarks. We're going to test out some PC games and some emulation on this machine. Personally, I think this 5600G paired up with a 1660 or even a 1660 Super is a really good combo. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to move over to my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. Alright, so here it is. This is actually running Windows 11 straight out of the box. We have that Ryzen 5 5600G. 6 cores, 8 threads, base clock of 3.9 GHz with a max boost up to 4.4, but with this setup here, I've only really seen it boost up to 4.2. We've got 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz. The GTX 1660 with 6 GB of VRAM, unfortunately this is not a super variant. And uh, obviously we have those built-in Radeon graphics because this is using the Ryzen 5600G. Overall, had a really good experience with this so far. It does have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 built in. We got gigabit Ethernet around the back. And the first thing I did was run some benchmarks just to see how this thing performs. Taking a look at Geekbench 5, coming in with a single core score of 1,364. Not bad at all on that single core over there. And Multi is looking pretty good too at 6,390. Next on the list, Cinebench R23. We got right there at around 10,000. Not too shabby at all for just having 6 cores and 12 threads. Moving over to 3D Mark, first up, Night Raid with a 39,607. Firestrike looking great here at a 12,465. And I was pretty surprised to see 5,742 with Time Spy. Just from the benchmarks, it's looking like a pretty capable gaming machine. But, you know, these are benchmarks and now it's really time to see how this thing can game. So let's go ahead and throw some PC games at this machine. And first up, we have Call of Duty Warzone, 1080p, high settings, and this little combo here with the 5600G and that 1660 actually worked really well with basically everything that I've tested. There was one game that I had to drop it down to medium, but a majority of the stuff does work at high and ultra with no issues whatsoever. And with this one, I got an average of 88 FPS. Moving over to Dirt 5, 1080p, high settings, I did try ultra and I did see it dip down to around 58 every once in a while, so I dropped it down to high. And I got an average of 67 FPS. Now, turning dynamic resolution scale on would help out, but with a game like this, personally, I don't mind locking V-Sync on, so we're just going to be running at 60 on a 60 hertz monitor. High settings, 1080p, still looks great and plays just fine. So when it comes to this game here, Back for Blood, I've had very good luck with this on basically everything that I've tested. Even APUs work great with this game, so I knew that I could go up basically as high as we could go at 1080p. So we're maxed out here, 1080p, and I got an average of 161 FPS. Now, 
I always like throwing at least one fighting game in. We have Injustice 2, 1080p, very high settings. There's no Ultra settings in here. I thought there was, but I might have been mistaken. Everything's maxed out. It's going to run at 60 all day. Looks great also. GTA 5, 1080p, very high settings. I knew we'd have good luck with this game. I mean, it came out years ago. It still looks great. And at very high settings, on this machine here with that 5600G and that GTX 1660, I got an average of 111 FPS. When it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, there are a few things that we can do to get a better frame rate out of this, but I'm at 1080p medium with crowd density set to high. If you turn crowd density down, we're going to get a much better frame rate out of it. But having all of those people on screen does make a big difference. And with this one, we got an average of 61, 1080p medium settings. Here's Borderlands 3, high settings. I did try very high and I got some frame dips and you might see it here every once in a while. It doesn't go under 60. I actually think this comes down to this being run off of an external drive. I really wasn't sure what was going on at first at very high settings, but I do think that we could at least lock this at 60 very high. And finally, on the PC gaming side of things, Doom Eternal, 1080p, very high. I did try Nightmare, but remember we only have 6 gigs of VRAM with the GTX 1660, and it gives me that warning if I try to go to Nightmare. Very high, still looks amazing, and I got an average of 103 FPS. And as you can see on screen, there's a ton of stuff going on. I mean, this machine will definitely handle Doom Eternal. Now it's time to move over to some higher end emulation. First up, we have Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator. This is Red Dead, and I did turn V-Sync off because I was really interested to see if the newer builds would run this at 60. And unfortunately, with the settings I'm using right now, we're only around 47 FPS. I do think that we could run this at 60 with some tweaks. Wii U, the SimU emulator, Breath of the Wild, 1080p, Vulcan back in, it's running great. Every once in a while, you will notice it drop down to around 58, and if you take a look behind Afterburner in the top left-hand corner, that's just shaders being cached. That's kind of how it is with this game here. But overall, you should have a really good experience with Wii U on a machine like this. And the final thing I tested was PS3 using RPCS3. Vulcan back in, 1080p, Skate 3, running at 60. I mean, it runs amazingly on this setup here. With that NVIDIA GPU and that 6-core, 12-thread AMD CPU, you're going to get amazing performance with this here. And since we got a pre-built here with an OEM cooler, I really wanted to check those CPU temps, but it actually does a really good job for what we have here. At idle, we average 42. While gaming, we only average 68 degrees Celsius, and in a 10-minute Cinebench R23 test, the maximum that I hit with the CPU on this thing was 84 degrees Celsius. So yeah, in the end, I do think that this is a pretty good performing little pre-built unit, and pairing up that 5600G with a 1660 or a 1660 Super is definitely a potent little combo when it comes to 1080p gaming and higher-end emulation. You didn't see anything lower-end in this because it's just going to run. I mean, we have more than enough power, especially with that 5600G running it up to 4.2 in this machine here. But just a quick word of warning, I mean, when you go in buying an open box gaming PC, just make sure you're getting what it states you're getting. Now, I knew going into this that I wasn't getting that RTX 3060, but I still expected that 512 gigabyte SSD. It was something I kind of glossed over when taking a look at this, but at a $750 price tag for an open box PC with that 5600G and a 1660, especially with GPU prices right now, I think this turned out to be a pretty good deal. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this rig, just let me know in the comments below. And, you know, with this setup here, even though we don't have a great motherboard that can do overclocking from the BIOS, we can still use an application called the APU Tuning Utility, and we can up the TDP on this to get a little better out of it. And we might be able to get those 4.4 GHz boost clocks. Plus, we got a little headroom on that GPU. We can always overclock from Afterburner. So if you want to see something like that, let me know down below. But that's it for this one. And like always, 
Thanks for watching.